Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to some general aviation flight simulator action. Right, uh, we are back aboard the flight sim where Cessna 414 Chancellor and I've already done this video, or already, I should I say, I've already featured this aircraft in a previous video. Uh, but I do like to go through the comments. Stop moving my head around, head track and turn that off for a minute. But uh, like I said, I do like to go through the comments and um, I like to help wherever I can. So, you know, if you have a question, I will try and answer it in some way, shape, or form. Now, Onboard Simulations 8304 asked regarding the GTN 750 uh, avionics how you use the navigation mode on the autopilot and basically set it up so that the aircraft can actually uh, track and follow uh, a line that you set up with your magenta line that you set up on the GTN 750. So we have obviously the Chancellor. We're currently started up and we are currently sat at our favourite place, RAF Waddington. So whilst we're sat off the main taxiway, I'm going to go through a few of the more important parts, i.e. these four pieces of equipment here. So this, these two are both GTN 750s. At the top here we have an autopilot uh, section and the other one is our transponder. So first of all we shall turn our transponder on to standby. Now the GTN 750s I usually like to run the left panel as my map and my right panel as terrain warning. So we'll set the terrain warning up uh, to run. Now that's going to sit there in red because we're on the ground obviously the ground is literally underneath our feet. Um, and then I'll just leave that as it is. Clear the message. Now, to set up a flight plan, we're going to have to create a flight plan through our GTN 750. So, this is the main screen that the 750 will sit at. Once again, we'll just clear that off because we're going to solve that in a minute. You click flight plan and we'll change that. We don't want that. So, you set your origin airport. So at the moment we are sat at Echo Golf X-Ray Wilco Waddington and we're going to go to Echo Golf Sierra Sierra which is Stansted Airport. Well obviously not but it's going to give us a magenta line for us to follow. So we're departing, this is a basic, as basic bones navigation as you can get. So we're departing from Waddington, going to Stansted, um, it is 82.1 nautical miles away. Hey presto, that is all we need to do on that. So if we bring the map up, obviously it's zoomed in at the moment, but there is Waddington and there is, more importantly, our magenta line. So what we are going to do, we're going to take off on runway 20 and we're going to gain some altitude. We're not going to use the autopilot at this part of the flight. We're going to gain up to about 3,000 feet, set the autopilot, and we're going to enter the two stages of autopilot that I like to use. Now the first one is the heading mode. And basically, the aircraft is going to follow this line that I am moving now. And basically I'm going to set the aircraft to follow roughly alongside the magenta line. So it's going to get us to the magenta line. Once we get close enough to the magenta line, I'm going to switch over from heading mode to navigation mode. Now navigation mode is slightly different. Navigation mode is where the, the aircraft will detect the magenta line and will automatically follow it. Now at the moment we have a point-to-point -point, um, map, a point-to-point -point route. But if you had multiple waypoints in between your route, the aircraft will follow the magenta line course for course, deviation for deviation, and will go straight to its destination. So one thing we do have to remember about this is you can switch navigation mode and it will bring up here in this section here what mode you're actually in. Um, you can switch to navigation mode whenever you like but you have to get the aircraft close to the magenta line. It's no good doing it from a few miles away or 10 miles away or more. Uh, you have to fly it roughly to the magenta line then select navigation mode then select and then it will automatically lock onto that magenta line and hopefully uh, the altitude we will be setting for this flight uh, will obviously then follow the course. So we are going to set our transponder to on, reset the view, turn head tracking back on again, check how things hokey dokey. So we are 
ready to go. I'm not, I'm not going to touch the autopilot, it's completely off. Transponder's on, that's set up, that's set up. Right, let's go. I used to fly a lot of aircraft with the GTN 750. Uh, the 808 Comanche has a GTN 750. It's weird to have such an old aircraft with a GTN 750 slapped into the cockpit, but uh, it's a wonderful piece of equipment. And I do like these multi screen um, navigational aids. Obviously, at the moment, I am also running a G1000. More information on that probably in another video. It's going to be very hard for me to demonstrate this, but I actually do have a G1000 sat in front of me. So, turning out to runway 20, like I said, don't have to talk to air traffic. We don't have any aircraft in the area. This is not going to be an accurate flight for the 414. We're just demonstrating a purpose of how to use navigation. So we'll just centre the heading and just to set now the heading mode which I'll be following, like I said that line there is currently set to follow straight down the runway. So normal takeoff procedures, coming off the parking brake, going on to the wheel brakes. Let's go. This is an awesome sounding aircraft. I still love this thing. Next week's live. Set up about 2,000 feet for our little exercise. Now, if we pull the GTN 750 map out, as you can see, magenta line is here, and we're currently in a right hand turn. So, what we're going to do, we're going to go into heading mode and swing this around. I've actually set this wrong, got the wrong way. And I'm going to put this line to intersect anywhere I like along the magenta line and let the aircraft fly itself. So the altitude is held 
2,000 feet. And we are heading mode. So at the moment we haven't touched navigation mode. But we are going to make our right hand turn to intersect with the purple magenta line. Turbulence will be at the moment. But this is not the navigation boat, this is not the aircraft basically smelling out the magenta line and following it, it's following on a heading mode. So whatever our heading is, is what we're, where we are heading. And I can change that with any of a heading correction. But we don't want that, we want navigation mode, that was the question. So what we're going to do, at the moment you notice on the autopilot section, We'll ignore the altitude because we're holding 2,000 feet. This section here, and it says heading, because we are in heading mode. So what we need to do is switch this over to navigation. Actually, no, we don't do that. CDI. And set this up for GPS even. Now we press navigation, and it puts GPS at the bottom here. We're still flying in a heading mode. We're going to slowly intersect with the magenta line. Well, what's going to happen is this GPS, this small GPS word here, is going to replace heading. The aircraft now has actually worked out where the magenta line is, and the aircraft in navigational mode is now going to fly towards the magenta line and will make a gradual left hand turn to line up with it. That's all we've done. Altitude is the same, we are in navigational mode, we're not in heading mode, autopilot is on. It's as simple as that. So the next 30 seconds or so we will start a left hand turn and I have not got my hands on the stick. So about to intersect it. And there we go, left hand turn. on the magenta line. The aircraft is essentially flying itself. So if you had different waypoints, obviously at the moment we are point to point, but you had different waypoints and you had a waypoint over here or one over there and your magenta line was going all over the place, the aircraft in GPS mode will follow that route. But you have to have CDI button here pressed so that you go to GPS mode. It won't work in any other mode because you are essentially telling the aircraft you want to use the GPS navigational system 
to plan your route and to fly your route. The route was planned in the GPS, we're telling the aircraft to pay attention to that GPS. So I hope that kind of answers the question, how to set up navigational mode in, in this case, the 414 Chancellor and with a, uh, in this case, twin GTN 750 system. Obviously, this will be the freeware version of the GTN 750. You can get the payware versions of the GTN 750s, and I do believe this aircraft actually supports uh, the payware versions of the GTN 750s, and it's exactly the same. When it comes to basic navigation, including the navigation mode, remember that the CDI key highlights the GPS, and you get within a certain range of the magenta line on your heading mode, come off heading mode, leave it on roll mode, the aircraft will intercept um, the magenta line and it will go over to showing a GPS, which is what it's doing. The autopilot is now following the GPS. It is literally, I would say that's simple, but a, aircraft avionics are always fun. So I hope you've, um, I hope, I hope fans have answered that question for you. Um, I know obviously some of the onboard systems can be quite challenging. Uh, it's a lot easier on uh, instrumentation, but uh, the actual navigational systems are a little bit different. If you have any questions that you want me to have a look at um, in aircraft that I've already flown, feel free to ask. Uh, put a comment underneath any of the videos. I will get to them as soon as I can. Uh, we will be going back to the uh, Cows DA uh, 42, I forgot what the thing was called then. Um, the Twin Star, because that's going to be a fantastic little series of, air, a series of videos we're going to be doing. And we will be moving over to other wonderful GAA, GA aircraft here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So I hope you found this video informative, and I will see you guys in a future video very, very soon.